What is going on, everybody? So far, so we're here for a SmackDown review for last night's episode of SmackDown on Fox. We are on our way to Super Shutdown, Super Showdown, Super Slowdown, whatever you want to call this garbage on the 27th. But last night we got the who's next and who is going to be Gold Goldberg going to be challenging at Super Showdown. And honestly, not not a fan. Not happy. Not a match that I'm gonna to want to see. It's going to be Goldberg versus The Fiend for the Universal Championship. Now, the only thing when it came, because I thought this was going to be like the main event segment, the last time he was on SmackDown, to, well, the first time he was on SmackDown, it was like the final thing you saw was Goldberg and The Undertaker, I believe, at the end. This was a interview from his house. He did not fly to where they were at which was the SAP Center in San Jose, which, of course, is Bailey's hometown. So he was not there. He was at home. He gave us who he wants, and what he, it, and it made sense in the fact that Goldberg lost the championship, but now we got a rematch, even though rematches now are not a thing. Automatic rematches are not supposed to be a thing anymore, which we know is total bullshit, unless like, the only time it's not a thing is when storyline calls for it. Every other time it seems like somebody's getting a rematch. So we started the show off. It's Miz and John Morrison. They head to the ring for the dirt sheet. And the dirt sheet, if you don't know what that is, was ahead of its time in the early two thousand in the mid two thousands, John Morrison and the Miz were a tag team on ECW, I believe it was. And they were on WWE.com doing a pretty much a talk show. They were doing a talk show without any crowd or anything. They were doing, they were trying to become a viral sensation, a viral hit. It was ahead of its time because nowadays you have Up of Down Down, you have the Part of Awesomeness, you have the Go Figure, you have um, Seamus with his warrior work, the Celtic warrior work, you have um, Anna Chan TV with Oscar. All these like men and women of the WWE doing things on YouTube and Twitch. I believe Tyler Breeze has a streaming thing. So does um, so does uh, Xavier Woods. And back then, nobody like this wasn't a thing. I mean, yeah, Zack Ryder was the first person to do YouTube, but the dirt sheet was something done before any of that. They take the seats, they play the Super Showdown match with the New Day. They lead us to a video block of the upcoming new blockbuster, Once Upon it, Once Upon the Dirt Sheet. A movie. The video begins with a movie like rating of A for Awesome. The comedy video features The Miz, his dad, the producer Lance Storm, and John Lauren and I saw also make carriers. It also ends with coming soon with Super Showdown, new tag team champions, and then we go back to the ring. Which, it's just, an, just a parody video of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. With things that have happened coming up till now. Nothing else you can say about that. It says that might have been Oscar worthy, but it definitely it's definitely worthy of the tag team titles. But Morrison says everyone was booing them like a weeks ago, but now they have a blockbuster movie. Everyone wants to hang out with the cool kids. Some fans boo them, they go on and on and on, blah 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 blah, and then out comes the new day to save this segment as best as they could. They come up with tubs of popcorn instead of pancakes, even though Kofi's got some and he's tossing them somehow. I think he was tossing them. He's tossing something. They say the trailer was amazing. It had it all. They walk down the ring. The ring is big. He walks over to some fan and just holds his, holds his bucket over so people can get some popcorn. Kofi jokes about Miz's favorite, uh, Miz's dad's favorite superstar is Kofi more than his own son. They go on about the trailer and Biggie says it was hilarious that Miz and Morrison think they take the title at Super Showdown, take their titles at Super Showdown. That's Richard Pryor level comedy. New Day is in the ring laughing at the number one contenders. Miz goes on about how they dominated the New Day over the past few weeks. They mock Biggie and Kofi and out comes the Usos. What do they have to do with any of this? Ah, uh, hell if I should know. They aren't thrilled that Miz and Morrison saying they beat them. They welcome everyone to the Uso penitentiary, but they are interrupted by Dolph Ziggler and Dolph Ziggler's music. Miz and Morrison take advantage of the distraction, attacking the New Day, beating them down until the Usos rush in. They retreat. 
They're going to be able to head down, uh, head, head down, and we have ourselves a one on one, a tag team match. The Usos versus Rude and Ziggler. I thought we were going to be heading towards an eight man tag match. Thankfully, that didn't happen. This match was yes, was already preset. So we had Rudolph versus the Usos. Now, I will have to say, I didn't notice this the first few times they wrestled, but Jay, I think it's Jay, got some new artwork on his shoulders. His shoulders are completely tatted in the style of the, 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 the rest of his um, tattoo work. Jimmy doesn't have those. So if you're having problems identifying which Uso was which, as I have oh, since, the, since they came to WWE, one of them got tattoos on their shoulders. I believe it was Jimmy. It might be Jay. Whichever one does, that, that at least will help you tell them apart. This was a fun match. It's actually, I, 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 for a lot of the wrestling that on last night, I enjoyed a lot of it. This was definitely one of those matches. I enjoyed it. Rudolph is becoming a really good tag team. I hope they can do something with them. Not just like, hey, here's Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode. They win the tag team titles. They lose the tag team titles. We break them up because one team, one person goes to Raw, the other person stays on SmackDown. Don't do that. Like, and WWE needs tag team division. I mean, when Gable and Rude were teaming last year, but like last year, they ended up, I'm sorry, 2018 going into 2019, they were hell of a tag team, the glorious ones. This is just something that I think should stick together. Bobby Roode should, knows how to be a tag team wrestler. So does um, Dolph Ziggler. They work well together. Keep it that way. I didn't like the zigzag spinebuster combo by Roode and Ziggler on Jimmy. I mean, I'm sorry, on Jay, but big, Ziggler, but Jimmy picks up, breaks it up just in time. That was awesome. Glorious DDT, but fans boo as he um. As he goes for it, Jimmy blocks in and back drops. Rude Ziggler tags in, hits a zigzag on Jimmy for another close two count. Ziggler cranks up for a super kick, but Jimmy uh, gets up and hits one of his own. Rude gets sent to the floor. Jay tags in and goes up top for the big splash, but Zig but he lands on Ziggler's knees for two count. Ziggler and Rude go for the other team, but Jimmy makes the save. Jimmy and Ziggler tumble to the floor. Rude and Jay tangle. Jimmy tags in for a double super kick to Rude. Jimmy goes to the top and hits a big USO splash to look away. With the tongue standing out, one, two, three, the Usos are your winners. After the match, the Usos celebrate the music and hit celebrate, and that is that. They announced us the hype of Gold, um, Goldberg's appearance some more. Of course, they are going to. It was actually how they opened the show was who's next. Uh, they opened with this video package, then they went into the graphic for the um, opening theme for, um, for SmackDown. We get our WrestleMania 36 promo, and it is now officially because it is Saturday, 57 days away. Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss are backstage talking about the Fatal 4-Way for the future title shot. Bliss teases she has something twisted up her sleeve. They are wearing the new Bliss Cross Applesauce t-shirt, so since it's on a t-shirt, when they come out to a tag team, can you call them that? Because that's what they want to call themselves. Paul shows us last week's main event where Roman Reigns defeated uh, Roman Reigns and the Usos defeated Corbin and his cronies. After the match, Corbin got dumped with what was called dog food. I'm hoping it wasn't dog food, but if it was, it was absolutely disgusting. We see King Corbin storm the production truck backstage. He's furious over being shown. Who's like, who, who, who played that video? Oh, do you think it's funny? Who played that video? And some, 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 some goon just. Puts his hand and is like, me? Like, he's like really scared that he's going to get killed. Corbin grabs him, isn't happy, like, isn't happy. Throws him over the, like, pulls him out and throws him over the, down from the stairs to the production truck. Corbin is all smiles as Adam Pierce tells him that he went too far. Hopefully this is going to lead to Corbin getting into legal trouble. I mean, he beats up a production guy. From the technical staff that is not a professional wrestler that is not somebody who is a professional wrestler and that could be a legal problem maybe that's what happened maybe they basically what they need to do is that they need to end this complete king this king corbin stuff he is getting him way into over his head he thinks he's all this he's he's the top dog he's the top this he can do whatever he wants he has carte blanche he can do whatever he wants burn anybody attack anybody and everything will be fine no they need to reel that back in Cesaro versus Elias. Elias is in the ring with his guitar. Elias plays for a minute and asks who has his back in his match with Cesaro. 
He then asks who wants to walk with him. He starts performing his latest song called Third Time the Charm. Now, I noticed that when he, start, when he comes out and he, play, he plays a different tune, but when he goes to do one of his songs, it's always in the same tune. He's interrupted by Cesaro and Zayn. So Zayn means saves the stage, tells the fans to shut their mouths, tells his allies it doesn't feel good to be interrupted because Elias did the same thing to him. I says it's been a miracle the past two years if I don't get interrupted, which has happened like two or three times since he started doing this entire gimmick. So, yeah. Like, I know it was SummerSlam 2017 or 2018. I think it was 2018. Pre-show, he got to perform a set. No problem. Then, I think like two weeks ago, he played a set, didn't get interrupted, and the week after that, played a set, didn't get interrupted. So, there's that. It, it, yeah, he gets interrupted a lot. So, Elias and, say, and Cesaro have a match, which, Elias, this, this was actually a good match. Again, back-to-back -back matches have a good. The first half of this show, this was a tale of two shows. First half of this show, good matches. The Corbin stuff was air, the Dirt Sheet stuff was air, but the matches were great. Good to great. I enjoyed the tag team match with the Usos and the Rudolph. I enjoyed this match here. Elias ends up winning this one, even though it looked this one could have won either way. He wins with a big flying elbow drop for the one, two, three, going with the Macho Man elbow, no longer doing the um, drift away. Hey, changing it up. So, Charlotte Flair's announcement backstage. Hopefully, we'll get some kind of freaking um, information there on who she's going to be facing. I'm still calling for her to make her decision at NXT TakeOver Portland, but that's just me moving on here. For the first time since they started doing advertisements, Michael Cole plugs the XFO relaunch, which happens today at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on ABC, and then 5 o'clock on Fox tomorrow night as well. I mean, tomorrow afternoon on Fox, and then ABC, I mean, sorry, on ESPN on Sunday. So we are looking at ourselves some XL for football. Of course, people are like, oh, they're going to shove it down our throats on Raw and SmackDown. Raw should not be advertising the XFL whatsoever because it's on an NBC Universal um, channel and they have nothing to do with the XFL. The reason Michael Cole was advertising is because Fox has a partnership with the XFL and they're going to advertise those games. So I shouldn't, we shouldn't see anything on the on Monday Night Raw because it's on USA and US and uh, NBC Universal really doesn't want to have Fox or ABC affiliate ESPN affiliated shows being advertised on their channels. Goldberg is getting ready. Michael Cole's about to send it to him, and then Aaron Corbin comes out to stage with the mic, and he's pissed as can be. Still says he crown. See this crown. See this crown. It makes me it makes me king because I won King of the Ring. Again, they need to end this king garbage. It's not helping him at all. And everyone needs to bow down and listen to what he has to say. He says Roman Reigns lost last lost last says Roman lost last week, just like you're sorry, San Francisco 49ers lost to his Chiefs. Roman goes on about how Reigns can't do anything without the Usos when he he asked the Usos when, when he, he asked when the Usos would realize they're carrying dead weight. Corbin says if Reigns is as tough as he says he is, they would have fought him one on one at the Royal Rumble instead of getting help. Really, because ben, because Rudolph was there to help, wasn't there to help you out. Come on, man, seriously. Corbin says that he would have won the Fall Count Anywhere match in the Royal Rumble main event, and he would be headlining WrestleMania. He says, uh, as our king, he demands one more match with Reigns. From the bottom, as he's walking down the ramps, he says he's the king of SmackDown, and this show is going nowhere until he gets Reigns in the ring. Fans continue to boo. Corbin taunts a fan of ringside who's wearing a Reigns t-shirt. Of course, this is probably a plant because it's just, they're getting a little too friendly. This was definitely a plant. Reigns takes a drink, I'm um, sorry, Corbin takes a drink from the guy, and he's just like, give it up for this guy, give it up for him, and then just takes this and pours it over his head. This guy was all exciting and everything. And then it's just like his demeanor changed, like, oh, son of a bitch. He's go he goes and gets a bottle of water. It looks like to do the same thing, but out comes Roman Reigns. Roman runs down the ramp as he nails a Superman punch on Corbin. 
Bane sends Corbin into the barrier, then steals ring steps, and then again, and then he hits a drive-by. Bane brings Corbin into the ring, but immediately retreats to the floor. Fans boo as Corbin scrambles through the crowd and out of nowhere. Bane takes the mic in the ring and hauls Corbin back up, but he's not coming. He calls him a coward and says if the coward wants one more match, he can have it. He tells Corbin to have his boys stay at home because they're going to do it inside a steel cage. Fans pop. He exits the ring, greets the fan at ringside. Including the one he made the save for, and that was that. So, <sighs> there were people actually putting tweets out that, like, who is Roman Reigns going to face next after blowing off his feud with Corbin last week? And I'm like, are you sure about that? Super Showdown is on the 27th. That is uh, nine, 19 days from now. 27th. E 27th. Are you sure they were going to be done with it? Because I knew they weren't going to be done with it. If they're going to blow this thing off, it's either going to be at Super Showdown or at the Elimination Chamber. Most likely at Super Showdown because Roman Reigns is going to be inside the Elimination Chamber, winning the Elimination Chamber to go to WrestleMania to face the Fiend. That is where we're going. Hall of Famer Bill Goldberg, jo Goldberg joins us from his home in Texas live via silent. He is not backstage, according to the announcers. Cole welcomes him. Well, of course not. You could see that he is sitting in front of... Car like, when they were doing the... Um, because they showed him getting ready or showed a microphone being put on him. He's sitting beside his two cars. And I believe a weight set behind him. Goldberg thanks, Goldberg thanks Cole and says he's going to go and get it right to the point. Don't want to waste our time. Really because WWE has been wasting our time a lot lately. So thanks for, thanks for thinking about us, man. He watched the recent Mumble event and said it was inspiring. And gave him the itch again. Says his usual sucks back. WWE champion Brock Lesnar was busy with Ricochet at the event. But what about the Universal Championship? Goldberg talks about his previous reign, and it sounds like he's he wants to challenge the Fiend. But we get a special breaking news from the Firefly Fun uh, Firefly News Network. Why at the newscaster give us a mention on William William Goldberg says that his look sounds like he's going to challenge the Fiend. Well, this just in, he accepts. We get a word from Mercy the Brother who says it's going to be a cold day in hell before he loses that before the Fiend loses the Universal Championship. Wyatt sends us back to Goldberg with no mood for the jokes and games. Wyatt is about to offer some advice, but Goldberg says the only thing he will be taking is the title. He has one message. The Fiend, you are next. Walks away from the set. Wyatt gets here and says that wasn't very nice. Still got that angry hook when he says, let me in. Wyatt starts smiling again and waves goodbye to everyone, including Goldberg, as the fine house music plays. So, yes. We're getting The Fiend versus Goldberg for the Universal title. Just like The Fiend versus Roman is going to be an absolute disaster, this is going to be an absolute disaster. Oh, this makes my freaking head hurt. Oh, good grief. Oh. This is just no. No, no, no. I don't want to see it. You don't want to see it, but we're getting it. I'm so thankful I'm not watching Super Showdown because this is just going to be a massive waste of everybody's time. Backstage, Daniel Bryan is in deep thought as he's watching what happened between The Fiend and Goldberg. He Slater walks in and brings up what he just saw. That he's been worried about Bryan and just came to check on him. Slater mentions the recent strap match at the Rumble and says he would have never let any man beat him like that. He is just rambling and just rambling, pissing Daniel Bryan off more and more and more. He's <laughs> offending Daniel Bryan and Bryan asks Slater what he thinks about two of them meeting in the ring right now. He walks off, but Slater looks surprised, stands up, and gets it. And then we go to commercial break. Back from break, he Slater is about to be murdered by Daniel Bryan. Bell, he get, Bell rings immediately hit with a running knee by, by Daniel Bryan, sending him out. Bryan keeps control and brings him back into the ring for a missile drop kick. Bryan keeps up for a big pop, levers the yes kicks while Slater is on his knees. Roundhouse kicks. Slater gets a yes chant. Can't go for a while for Slater to get up. Brian nails the running knee and drops Slater. Bryant says he's not done yet, waving the finger like, no, 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 we ain't done. Grabs Slater's arm and starts stomping away. Cole says the fiend changed Brian. Brian does this again as the referee warns him. Brian goes into the label lock and the referee immediately calls for the bell because Slater is already done. Then Brian wins, has the serious look on his face like, you've done pissed me off. And... That was that. So Daniel Bryan, I don't know where Daniel Bryan's going, what Daniel Bryan's going to be going into, going into WrestleMania. All I know is he is, 
he's not in a good mood, and he Slater had this one coming. Middle former main event, the crowning new number one contender to Bailey and WWE champion, Shinsuke uh, Intercontinental champion, Strowman will be next. Back from break, and we see how Strowman won the Intercontinental title. But United going in the ring with the mic. Renee brings Strowman out to the ring, and it's the finish to him on. Renee asks how it feels to hold the title knowing it's finally his. Fans start cheering for him, and he says, He still gets chills when he thinks about it. He goes on some of his WWE accomplishments and says this is the greatest thing that has the one thing he hasn't been able to do as a superstar is hold a single snap title over his head until now holding it up. Where's the title? The music out comes Sami Zayn and Nakamura. Zayn says he's sorry to interrupt Brian's little, Brian's little celebration, but everyone knows everyone saw just saw what happened. Braun's win was fraudulent, and that's why Sammy and Nakamura are here to demand a rematch. Roman mentions how no one wants to hear Sammy talk right now, and I will defend the title anywhere, anytime, any place, including tonight in San Jose. Sammy wants this, says this will happen, but not tonight, and no one in San Jose, not no way in San Jose. <sighs> Sammy says that he. Th- they think, unlike Strowman, and they won't be tactical about this. Sammy says they have resources and the revival from behind, clipping the young, the young big man down. They beat the hell out of Nakamura and Sami Zayn come in. They beat the hell out of him too. Of course, um, Strowman fights back, but ends up beating the Kinshasa in the end to end the segment. So I feel this is going to be something we'll see at Super Showdown as well. I mean, they got to get as many title matches and stuff they can on there. So... Yes, it would not expect. It would not surprise me if we get Nakamura versus Strowman. This was not announced for Super Showdown, but I expect it to be at Super Showdown. Even though that wouldn't be a good idea because I know Sami Zayn can't go to Super Showdown because he is of Syrian descent, and the and Saudi Arabians don't like Syria right now. Then we see. What Otis will be doing next week, of course, is going to be a Valentine's date with Mandy. Mandy. So they give us a montage of that. And that's all we need to see from there. Famous versus Apollo Crews. Why this match is happening, who knows. And this is where everything just seems to be pointless and going downhill from here. This match was short, sweet, to the point. Well kicked. One, two, three. Don't really care. After the match, Sheamus looks over and delivers another one, but out comes Chad Gable. Hey, bro, Gable dodges a bro kick and tangles some more. Sheamus avoids an ankle lock, comes right back with a bro kick to level Gable. Sheamus stands tall, and that was that. What was the point? What was the point of that? And Sheamus tweeted out, is there anybody else? Anybody else? So you beat up on Chad Gable, you beat up on Apollo Crews. What's next? What else? What else they got? I I can't even go with what's next. This person, I I I don't get this whole vendetta against short people or people small, shorter than him. Which, by the way, Apollo Cruz is about the same height, if not a little. Like he's shorter than Sheamus, but he's a little, maybe just a tiny bit taller than Apollo than um Chad Gable. But they didn't do any short jokes with him. Why is it okay for? Why is it that we have to have the short jokes going on for Chad Gable, but nobody else has the short joke thing going on? Again, I don't like the short. I don't like the shorty name, and I'm not going to use it. Fatal Four Way: Alexa Bliss versus Carmella versus Dana Brooke versus Naomi. Winner will face Bailey. Who knows when? This match was terrible. You brought Naomi back last week. Brought her back to confront Bailey. And the way this match went, I figured, oh no, no obviously they're gonna, she's gonna win. This is basically how it is. We go to break. We come back, Carmella, Dana Brooke, and Alexa Bliss are in the ring. Bailey is the ringside. Naomi gets an entrance. Okay, that's stage one of knowing she might, she's possibly going to win this match. Halfway through this match, he's, her and Bailey come to blows. Bailey tosses her into the ring steps. Another sign that Naomi's going to win this match. Did Naomi win this match? Hell no. Who won this match? Was it Dana Brooke? No. Was it Alexa Bliss? No. Our King Mella wins. The Naomi hits the awful rear view. Carmella breaks it up, delivers two straight super kicks, one, two, three, and Carmella wins. 
Bailey hits her with whatever the hell that um, finisher she is now uses now is. Retreats upstage. There's no wood on when Carmella will get the title shot. Fox goes off the air with Bailey clutching her title on the ramp as Carmella stares from the back um, from the ring, crying on the mat. The only reason I can say that they went with this title shot, this title feud, is because of the history of Carmella and Bailey in NXT. They were known as Bay Mella. They were a tight knit. Um, top, uh, they were tight knit. Um, um, two some in NXT who did everything together. Like they were. They, like they were like when Sasha Banks and all of them went up to up to the main roster, and Bailey was on her own. Carmella was there with her, and they have been friends. And now that Bailey is evil and Carmella is a babyface, this will play off of that. But in my opinion, I think it's too late. This should have been Bailey's first feud after she t- cut her hair, after she destroyed the Bailey buddies, all of that shit. That should have been Bailey's first feud. Why they're doing it now makes no sense. You brought Naomi back last week, made it seem like she was going to be the one to challenge Bailey next, and unfortunately, that is not what's going on. Why? Hell if I should know. I don't know. WWE just makes no sense sometimes. Again, the Bay Mella feud should have happened a long time ago. Should have happened, and now it's going to happen. I think it's just way too little too late. Bailey's off doing bigger and better things while Carmella is just Carmella. But that is your SmackDown Live review for February 7th, 2020. XFL coming up tonight. Make sure to check that thing out. Give it a chance. If you are a football fan and you want to watch football, give it a chance. Just don't have high expectations for NFL quality football because that's going to be way too high. Don't even give it. It's, it's going to be a bridge between college and NFL. If it, if it succeeds at what it's doing and what it wants to do, I can see this being a bridge between NFL and college for those who aren't first ballot, like the first ballot Hall of Fame type players who are a shoe-in to make it in the NFL. There is a lot of potential for this to eventually be a league. If done right and has the capital and can make the money, this can be a league that lasts for a good while. And if it does, then maybe, just maybe, in the end, Vince McMahon might finally have to relinquish everything to Triple H, Stephanie, Shane, and go on to do the, NF- the XFL. But I will see you guys tomorrow for Unscripted. I'm hoping to maybe just maybe do something on the XFL on Monday. I'll have to figure that out. But until then, my name is Frogs. Hit that subscribe button. Comment down below. Like or dislike this video. Find me on Twitter at the Frogs Club. Find me on Twitch.tv slash the Frogs Club. And I'll see you guys again next time.